Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay, wait till up there. Okay, I want to just say it's on. <laughs> I just want to say thank you, everybody, for joining us, um, for taking time out of your evening to join us. Um, I know you guys live busy lives. We do with the baby and everything, but we really enjoy doing this. Like always, you can reach out to us. Um, if you got questions, if you need prayer or anything, you need somebody to talk to, Courtney's available 24 hours, seven days a week. And so is he. So, He's available. Courtney's available. No, Jay's available. <laughs> yeah. Just so, kidding. We're both available, honestly. Yes. Um, and that's through Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. or, you know, numbers or however is the best way to get a hold of us. Yeah. Any ways to get a, to get a hold of us, but yeah. we are available. <clears throat> Um, Courtney is super knowledgeable, so she has a lot of information, so she's willing to help you guys out. Thanks, babe. All right. So, we're good? Yeah, you want to start with okay. you? Well, the other day, the baby, baby Jude refused to take a nap. Yeah, he did? Yeah, he did. Oh. He was guilty of resisting arrest. <laughs> wow I wouldn't resist arrest that's I know. for sure right now yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, like we said thank you for joining us tonight um, tonight I'll start with John 10.10 10. the thief's purpose is to steal kill and destroy um, and that's steal our joy kills us through our drinking, smoking cigars. If you if, if you're a vapor, um, destroying our marriages, our relationships, our families, and that's speaking from my experiences with that verse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Courtney and I, we've had our issues. Mostly, it's her fault. But I mean, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but being married to an extremely confident and extremely knowledgeable um independent woman comes with its challenges and you know and that's that's okay you know um, i believe we wouldn't be able to navigate through our challenges our differences um our disagreements without living out of the word so that's how important you know walking with christ is in yeah. my opinion um, you know, when we react out of our flesh from, you know, let it be past issues or past trauma or just our past experiences, um, or even life's current situation and issues that we're going through. Um, for me, I discovered that there's a root cause to that. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, and it's easy for me to admit to it now, but it was a pride and ego thing. It was, it was my pride and it was ego that was preventing me from growing. Um, I would react out in anger, um, bitterness and rage. I had that all. Um, even if it's just you're, you're being sensitive about something and someone says something that triggers that, it triggers your insecurities um, and you react negatively on that. Um, that's basically reacting out of the emotions, our emotions. Um, because we know, and we, I think Courtney has said this before, hurt people hurt people. Um, and, and that's how strife comes into your house, into your marriage, into your relationship with your kids, with your, you know, your spouse, workers, co-workers. That's how that, the enemy comes in. So, but for me, um, I had to humble myself and, and walk in humility. That's apologizing to people, um, you know, and I, I've said this before, I think, and, you know, it's not about being right or wrong because, you know, I, I could be, even you've got to be willing to be wrong and then if you're right, but just say, hey, you know, I was wrong anyway because there's a bigger picture there to, to bring peace into the house, into your marriage, into your relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of like... We were talking about this, like if, if people, if two people are arguing and, you know, they're just going back and forth or trying to prove who's right, who's wrong, who's the person who's really right? How do you determine that? Well, it's really the person who's willing to say, you know what, 
it doesn't even matter. Like, like it's fine. Like, yeah, you know, the, the person that's willing to back down and humble themselves, really, that's the person who's right. Because we could sit here and argue something all day long and it's not going to get anywhere. It's, it's, you're, you're just like, like, like he's saying, it's like ego against ego. Like somebody has to be willing to kind of break that first and you know a soft answer like it says in proverbs the soft answer turns away wrath so the person who's willing to say you know what and it's hard when you're in those moments it's hard to be the person with the soft answer because you want to just have the comeback and the comeback and the response and the and the jab and the oh i have a good one but that doesn't get you anywhere no. you, 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 nobody so the person who just is willing to humble themselves and be like you know what it doesn't even matter you're right i don't want to argue about this like and that's also it's killing the flesh is what you're doing yeah it doesn't you're killing feel the good. flesh yeah it's not feeling good so mm -hmm. you know if you're doing something that doesn't feel good you're killing the flesh mm -hmm. feeding the spirit um mm -hmm. so so i you know so in ephesians 6 12 for our struggle is not against flesh and blood so it's not a, it's not against the other person yeah. you right. know mm -hmm. um it's like not, it's, it's, strife is, the Bible says where there's strife and envy, there's every evil work, every evil work. So when you're engaging in strife and in your household or with anybody, really, you're just opening the door to the enemy for every evil work. Like the person who recognizes that and prioritizes that above being right or wrong, that's the person that has wisdom because they recognize I'm not willing to open the door to strife just because I need to be right in this situation. And I think when you can just be like, you know what, like true maturity is getting to a point where you're like, it doesn't even matter if I'm, if they think I'm right, if I think I'm right, if they think I'm wrong, like it does not matter. It's not worth having strife and contention and proving myself. God, that's why we have to trust God to be our vindicator. He's the one who's supposed to make things right. We're not supposed to make things right. And, you know, there's the person that's going to be in humility and lay down their weapon first. You'll find that a lot of times it'll fix the relationship. It'll fix the situation and it'll it'll allow for the other person to let their guard down mm -hmm. as well and stop fighting you. That's not always the case because some people they're going to fight till the death. But in a lot of cases, it's it's about one person just being willing to humble themselves. Yeah. Um, in Galatians, and the easy way to remember this, and you, like for me, strife. So I had to get the definition of strife. And you can see it's arguing, it's being nasty. It's, you know, it, it's, you can see the definition of that word. Um, but basically for me, I'm a pretty kind of simple kind of guy. So, I don't want strife and I don't want anything to do with that. I don't even care what the definition is or what the other words are. What I want to do is what I what I how I combat that or I combat the enemy with that is by knowing what the fruits of the Holy Spirit are. Um, and that's in Galatians 5, 22, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And it's pretty simple. If you're not operating out of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and one that I struggle with, self-control sometimes. You know, we all suffer from self-control. So if you're losing control and you're not operating out of one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, then that's where, you know, you're struggling. And that's where strife can come in. Um, sometimes, what I wrote down sometimes, the best defense is having a good offense. And that's just staying in the Word. Yeah. Staying in the Word. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. Um, it's staying in the Word. And that goes hand in hand with, 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 with what we had issues come up was seeking good counsel. And we said this before, Luke 5, get yourself some Luke 5 friends. Um, mm -hmm. That's the guys that lowered the guy on the mat to Jesus. And he healed, he healed them because of his, their friend's faith. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing there. That's a beautiful story there. And that's how important it is to be around people that build you up. Yeah, and it also takes humility to ask other people for help. Because we always want to be like, I can handle it myself. I don't need anybody else. I don't need, but that's not, that's why the Bible, you know, 
one can send a thousand to flight, but two can send 10,000 to flight. That's what the Bible says. So the strength that's in numbers with the right people giving you counsel, it's, yes, is it humbling? Yes, it's humbling to ask other people for help, but you will get so much further, so much faster than if you try to do it yourself. Because there's people who know more than you, who can pour into you, that can help you get from point A to point B without uh, going all the back roads, you know, get you directly there. And so I think like, you know, when we're in these situations and we have like any issues, as you get closer, the closer you get to God, the more you're going to start to see stuff come out and like... It's like the analogy of like you turn a light on and all the roaches, you can see all the roaches. Like as soon as you turn on the light, they like scatter. The, like in the Bronx when I was a kid, you turn on the light, the roaches scatter like that? <laughs> yes. Wow. That's, that's what happens when you start walking in the truth and you start reading the word. It's not that the problems, because you might be tempted to feel like, man, I, I started walking right and living right and living by the Bible. And it's worse now than it was before. I have yeah. this problem and that problem and this thing's coming at me and that thing's coming at me. But the truth is that stuff was always there. Those people were all, all always like that. They always thought the same way. Yep. They felt the same way. They did the same thing. It's just that now you're different. So the light in you is causing all of this stuff to be exposed. And the beauty of that is that you can actually see it now and you can actually do something about it. Because the truth is it was festering in there and you just were unaware. So it's not that it wasn't there before, it just, it was. It's just you didn't recognize it and so you weren't able to deal with it. So don't be discouraged if you get closer and as you get closer to God, you find there to be more tension in some ways. Like, how is this the case? This is harder, it's easier to just get drunk and forget about your misery. And when you turn to, to people in Proverbs eleven fourteen, where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Now, with that being said, you don't want to go, if you're having marital problems, to your single friend yeah. <clears throat> that's hitting the bars and yeah. going out. You don't want any advice from him. So you have to be careful who you mm -hmm. take advice from and who you kind of vent to or who you, you know, mm -hmm. seek guidance from. Somebody who's in the word and somebody who understands yeah. things, spiritual things, is who you want to seek counsel from. And, you know, that's that's just part of the walk. And as you go and as you grow, you continue to deal with stuff. And the light is always shining brighter and brighter. There's never a point where we get to this place where we're like, oh, good, we've arrived. That doesn't happen. So you just have to be, you have to stay encouraged that when you're dealing with a lot of stuff and it's heavy and it's exhausting and it's hard, the reality is that the enemy is, he is coming to steal, kill and destroy and that seed that's been planted in you of the word of God, he's trying to s destroy it before it even can take root because he wants you to be so discouraged by all the problems that you're like, you know what, forget it. It was just way easier to live as a son of the devil yeah. than it is to live as a son of God. So, so like I said, for me, pretty simple. Um, and that's Galatians 5, 22, and that's the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's how you, that's one of the steps that you can take to combat the enemy when he comes at you. Um, and, and growing in faith, growing in the word in Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. And when you're going through these issues, when you turn on the light and the roaches are out and they're scattering all over, remember that God knows what you're capable of. You know, that if that's taking a shoe and start smashing some roaches, then that's what you're capable of. He knows that. Um, sometimes the enemy attempts to destroy you with, with stuff and God will turn it around and use it to bless you. Um, and I know you you guys have heard us talk about baby Jude and his story, you know, and the enemy will he, he will attempt to destroy your marriage, kill your baby. Um, and now look at us. And I think that started me continue in my journey. And now I feel so blessed and so overflown with, with the word that I want to share it. I'm just. Yeah. And then, you know, that situation with the baby, like he he was, you know, in such a. Uh, 
situation that was like so vulnerable and we had to come together and and really be united in that situation and any amount of strife really could have been life or death for him at that point because and the enemy will look for an entrance so you have to be careful when you're going through these things that you do not allow that strife to come in. And if you have to seek outside counsel, great. If you have to, whatever you have to do to prevent the strife so that you can continue, you're gonna, it's, 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 that's the only way because some of these situations we're dealing with, we are teetering on victory or failure. It's just like, it's such a fragile situation and with him it was. And so it's like, we have to continue to just make sure that we do not allow the strife to come in at any cost even if it's okay whatever i'm i'm even though i know i'm not wrong i'm wrong like yeah. i don't care I, you know the flip side of that is that if you stay in the word and you stay strong it's going to make you stronger like mm -hmm. courtney and i you know yeah we celebrate our two-year anniversary this weekend mm -hmm. um but we have grown so much in, in such a short amount of time because of the situations that we've gone yeah. through. Um, I feel like I've known her my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, she's my best friend. Um, yeah, it, it, sometimes we go, but it's but when you're living out of the word, it, it's, you know. Iron sharpens iron. You That's why I mean? you gotta get yourself a good, a good partner because you don't spend any more time with anybody than the person that you're married to. So if you're single and you're watching this, make sure you're gonna find somebody who's, who's iron sharpens iron. And, you know, even if you're already married and you're like, well, the person isn't trying, it doesn't matter. Let the Holy Spirit be your iron. We'll be your iron that sharpens iron, you know, until that person gets jealous. You provoke them to jealousy through your life and through your victory and through your, your character and through your own growth. It's going to be inspirational to them to be like, wow, there's a change there and I want that. You know, it's, it's desirable. When you stay in the word, um, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and this is out of the living, the living translation. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed and broken. We are perplexed because we don't know why things happen as they do, but we don't give up and quit. We are hunted down, but God never abandons us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going. That's for you if you don't quit. So he, that's a promise that he has, that he will not abandon us. Mm -hmm. um, even though we get knocked down in life with stuff, and we will. Mm -hmm. You will. You're going to turn on the light. You start walking in the light. Those roaches are going to come out. Mm -hmm. Stuff is going to come out from left field. It's going to be, and it's sometimes it's a one-two. We've mm -hmm. talked about, yeah. I, I like to throw the Mike Tyson analogy out there where, you know, <clears throat> everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And sometimes it's not a one punch. Sometimes it's a combination. And he's going to keep coming at you, keep coming mm -hmm. at you. So is it tough? Yes, but it's rewarding. And I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. If you've been living out of the world, give this a shot. Yeah. That's, I, I can promise you that things will be different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the thing about this whole, all of this, is that if you're not given the opportunity, like we, our goal every week is to give you the opportunity to see that there is a better way of doing things. So there's a better way of living. The way you're living, if you feel like you're at a dead end, you're miserable, you're frustrated, you're unhappy, you feel like there's more, it's because there is more. And, and your spirit man knows it because you were born for something that is so much bigger than you can even imagine. Like you can't even wrap your head around it. But the truth is that it's still there. Even if you don't acknowledge it, it's still there. The Bible says the gifts and the calling are without repentance. So God's not changing his mind about the gifts that he's given you. And so maybe you're in a position where you're like, like I, I need something different. I need some change. And we were talking about this, this last week and it like, really, I grew up in church. So for me, like there was always, like I always knew about, God. I always knew about what Jesus did for us. I always knew about salvation, what it took. It, I, even though I didn't really get a good deep personal walk until I was older and yeah, after I had Hazel, I really, um, it was personal to me. So, but I grew up in church, so I was exposed to it. But like Jay wasn't, he didn't grow up in church. He wasn't exposed to it the way that I was. So mm -hmm. when he was telling me his perspective about it, 
Well, can yeah. you understand that? Great. Um, um, so my perspective on it was when my the mother of my kids, the three kids, when her mother got passed away in an accident and we went to the funeral, we went to... It was a small little town in Mississippi. People were super friendly. There, there were amazing people there. The preacher was amazing. And, you know, he talked about her and she had just gotten saved. She, he didn't really know her, but he said, you know, she came in, she sat there. And then he talked about how wonderful heaven was and how glorious things were for her, even after suffering a very terrible accident. Um, and I noticed a change in her. So I remember sitting there listening to that and thinking, wow, the way I can describe it is like she hit the lottery. Like she went off to a better place. Um, after all the suffering here, she went to a better place. And I was like, man, this is, like this lady hit the lottery. Like it's amazing. But nobody ever said, hey, I can have that. You know, I, I, it can it can be I can give it to you, too. You know, and this is how you do it. Nobody said that. So I just kept on living my life and um not really ever realizing that that's given to everybody. Yeah, and I like that was so crazy to me to hear him say that because I had just like we live in a Christian culture supposedly. There's churches on every corner and yet here we have somebody that is has never heard it. Yeah. Like <coughs> sorry. <coughs> <laughs> Keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna so, talk yeah. But yeah, so the thing is that it's available to you. And it's available to all of us. Jesus did not, it doesn't matter how bad you are, how much of a sinner you are, how much you don't think you deserve it. You don't deserve it. None of us do deserve right. it. None of us do anything to earn it. It's a free gift that's given to us salvation, but salvation, but we have to accept it. <laughs> I know I need it. <coughs> okay. So, <laughs> this is live, so it's the it's real. But so, if you're in a position where you're like, I want that, I want that life, then you know we're here for you to guide you, to pray for you, to. It's really about a decision. It's not about a little prayer you pray. It's about a decision that, you know what, I'm not going to live for me and for my way anymore. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to live for the word. I'm going to live his way. And it's just, it's that simple. Jesus, I accept your sacrifice that you made for me, that you died for my sins. And and now I don't, I'm, I'm dead to me. Courtney is dead. Now the life I live, it's in, it's in him. So where he tells me to go, I go. What he tells me to do, I do. What he tells me not to do, I don't do. Sometimes do I want to fight? And do I want to keep doing it? Yes. But ultimately, the Holy Spirit is there to convict us, to remind us. That's why we need the Word of God, because the Holy Spirit brings the Word to our remembrance when we're let certain verses will pop in your head. Things won't sit right anymore. You'll just be like, I know that I don't need to go in that direction. I know it. this plan I have, I don't feel good about that plan anymore. I'm going to cancel it. Or I'm going to, whatever it is, you have to trust the Holy Spirit that's in you to direct you, to guide you. And that only comes by being born again and by accepting Jesus into your life and letting him run your life. So if you're like, my life sucks, I hate my life, I want to die. Well, yeah, good. Then you're the perfect person. You're the perfect candidate because you can die for, you can die to yourself and you can start living for him. And it is very adventurous living for him. Things will come out and he will ask you to do things that are literally insane. You can't even wrap your head around it. But you know and you feel peace about it even though people might think you're crazy. Like it doesn't make sense. It's not what culture tells you. It's not even sometimes what Christians tell you is normal. But that's where you're going to go because the Holy Spirit will lead you where he knows that you can, like you were saying, he knows what you can handle. He knows what you can do. And he knows what you're capable of. So he's going to take you those places. And we just have to be brave and be bold enough to say yes to the call. We have to be able to say yes. And it's not easy to say yes because sometimes it requires you being very uncomfortable and your flesh being uncomfortable. But that's when you know you're growing. Because mm -hmm. when you're feeling uncomfortable, you know, that's when you know that you, you're, you're killing the flesh. You're killing the flesh. Mm -hmm. There's always excuses. Well, 
you know, I, I can't right now because it's like when the, when the man asked Jesus, well, can I go bury my father before I follow you? And he said, no, let the dead bury their own dead. So he, he's, there's no, there's always a good excuse. Well, I'm a mom. I have three kids. Oh, I have a one-year-old. I can't do that right now. Or, you know, I just got married. I'm a newlywed. I can't do that right now. Or my house is under construction. I can't do that right now. Or, oh, I don't have the, I don't have the finances for that. I can't do that. Right. There's always going to be an excuse why you can't do what God's called you to do. But he's going to ask you to do things that don't make sense in the natural. Because they're, they take faith. And they require you stepping out of your own comfort zone and just doing what he's called you to do and told you to do. So it's, it's living for him is never dull. So if your life is boring and dull and it sucks and it's miserable, then why don't you just start a new life with him and it's available to you. And he, all you have to do is repent and say, you know what? Repentance is just, I was going that way. I was doing these things. I was going after these people. I was living this life. I'm not living that life anymore. It just leads to disappointment over and over and over. And as you turn around and go the other direction, you'll start to meet people that are supposed to be in your path now. Mm -hmm. You'll start to come across friendships that are going to be healthy for you and build you up. And you'll start to drop relationships or drop off that no longer suit you. Things like that. Even family members. Yeah, especially family members. Yeah. The people that are closest to you should notice a difference in you. And that's like, you, Courtney always said, we're the only Jesus some people will ever meet or read the Bible. We're the only, so your life will change, people will fall off, and the right people will come in your life that need to be there. Yeah, and it's not about flesh and blood. It's about the people that stick with you in this walk. You know, it, it doesn't have to be family. It could be friends. It could be anybody, a spouse, you know, mm -hmm. even just our story of our relationship would make people believe in, in God because it was just, it was supernatural the way it happened yeah. and how quickly everything happened. But it was, God was all over it. So like, yeah, you just, it, it's about a decision. It's that simple. It's not, it's not complicated. And so if you've never heard that before, that's, we want to, we want to make sure that you know that's available for you. Don't wait another day. Let the dead bury their own dead. You don't know if you could be the one that's dead tomorrow. And guess what? Once you're in eternity, it's too late to change your mind. And there's a, we only get one life and we only get one day at a time. We only get one moment at a time. There's nothing's guaranteed. So don't waste your time kicking the can down the road when the enemy is the one that's causing you to do that because he does not want you to repent. He, he wants people in hell. Satan wants to put people in hell. He likes being their father. But it's time for us to to kick him down the road. So. <clears throat> Come on. <laughs> so like always, <coughs> thanks before she has another cough attack. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for taking time out of your evening to join us. It, once again, any questions, prayers, requests, anything you have, feel free to reach out to Courtney. She's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so is he. Um, tonight's quote is Mother Teresa. Um, I know God will not give me anything I can't handle. I just wish, I just wish God didn't have so much confidence in me. <laughs> That's a good one. Aww. That's a good one. Poor but once again, he's not going to give us any more. He knows what we're capable of mm -hmm. and he gives us the word for strength. And, you know, we'll do his will on his strength. Yep. So, Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening. Yep. Thanks, we guys. We love you guys. Reach out. <laughs> um, thank you. Talk to you thank soon. You. See you All next right. week.